Hi, my name is Brett Englund. I'm the Director of Sales for Electrification at Vanguard Power. Chances are good if you're here today, you've got some questions about electrification and batteries, and maybe you're even looking at electrifying an application yourself. So let's talk about some of the common things that you need to think about in choosing the right size of battery for your application. Let's get started. So let's talk about how you choose the right type of battery pack for your application. One of the most common questions we get is how long will it run? And the answer, frustrating enough, is it depends. All batteries work on the same basic principle, converting a chemical reaction into electrical energy. But determining how to compare two batteries to each other can be confusing not just in terms of power, but also in terms of size. A good way to think about the size of a battery is thinking about it like a big tank of water with a drain at the bottom. The tank represents the battery itself. Let's start with voltage. Voltage is a measurement of how hard the electrons are being pushed out of the battery. In our example, it represents the height of the water in the tank. Current, which is measured in amps, relates to the volume of water that would flow out of the tank each minute. Power then is calculated by multiplying voltage times current. Neither of those alone can give you enough indication of the true potential of the power of the battery. So there's two other really complicated terms that you'll run into amp hours and kilowatt hours. Amp hours is a measurement of how long a battery can provide power at a constant current rate. It's a very common term because it's easy and direct, but its big drawback is you can't use it to compare batteries of two different voltages. In our example, it's more like measuring the area of two tanks of water. Without knowing the depth, you can't measure the volume of the two tanks. Kilowatt hours, then, is a true measurement of the energy of the battery, or size of the tank in this example. It's calculated by multiplying voltage times the amp hours. It's the only way to properly compare the capacity of batteries at different voltages. And it's like measuring the volume of water in the tank. Let's look at an example using that tank of water example. Here are three different tanks. You notice that each one has a slightly different depth and a different area, but the volume for all three is still the same. This is the same concept that allows you to measure three different batteries with different voltages. Looking at this more in a real world way and how energy and energy usage impacts runtime and why we always say it depends when people ask how long the battery will operate is next. In this example, we have our three tanks of water and they are all the same size and shape. The only difference is the size of pipe at the bottom and therefore the current or flow of water coming out. To determine runtime, we calculate the amp hours divided by the current for each tank. In this case, we can do that because the voltage is all the same, which results in the runtime listed at the bottom. You can see the runtime isn't determined necessarily by the size of the battery, but by how fast you drain the tank. What makes this difficult in the real world is that how quickly you drain that tank depends on how you use your application. In a high load scenario, that tank gets empty quicker. In a low load scenario, it gets emptied slower. Think about it like cutting grass. If you're cutting thick grass, you're going to require more energy. And if you're cutting thin, light grass, you require less. OK, so in the real real world, how long will it last? Let's take a look at a 5 kilowatt hour Vanguard battery pack. So for a refrigerator that draws 60 watts an hour times 24 hours, you'll get about three and a half days. An electric car that draws 253 watt hours per mile, you'll get about 20 miles. And for an experimental Navy rail gun that draws 25 megawatts, you'll get less than a second worth of operation. It's a frustrating answer, it depends, but it's how it works in the real world. Now let's look at some specific terms about battery that you should probably know. The first one is depth of discharge and state of charge. They're both similar terms. Depth of discharge measures how empty a battery is, and state of charge measures how much charge the battery has left. They measure the same thing, just looking at it in a different perspective. So let's talk about state of health. This is different than state of charge or depth of discharge because it's an indication of how much capacity is left in a battery compared to when it was new. So what impacts battery life? Well, how fast it gets charged, or how deeply it gets discharged. The cell temperature during charging can have an impact on state of health, as well as the state of charge that it's stored at. At some point, it reaches 80% capacity, which the IEC standard is the end of life for a battery. But the key thing to remember is that at 80% capacity, there's still a lot of life left in that pack. This chart shows three different batteries, and you'll notice the impact of power utilization over the same number of cycles. A higher power utilization battery will decrease more quickly than a low power battery. The high power use battery has a cycle life of 1300 cycles, and the medium power use battery has a life of 2000 cycles. Another common term in battery is C rate, 
which describes the current rate flowing out of the battery with regards to how long it takes to drain the battery. The term C is the rate that it takes to completely discharge the battery or complete a charge in one hour. A 1C rate equals one hour. It helps people convert the capacity in amp hours and the charge and discharge rate and understand the time it takes to do either. C rates can be different depending on the types of charge or discharge and temperatures. An example here is an LG cell with a 3.1 amp hour capacity. A 1C discharge would mean it discharges 3.1 amps in one hour. A 0.2C charge would mean each hour it would charge 0.62 amps, or it would take roughly five hours to fully charge the 3.1 amps. Let's talk about charging. A common question is how fast can you charge? A good analogy is filling a glass of water. You can start by filling the glass pretty quickly, but as you get to the top, you need to slow down to fill it up completely without overflowing. The same goes for a battery. If you have a relatively empty battery, you can crank up the power and pump a bunch of energy into it. You have to be careful when you get close to full, that's when you need to back off and trickle the energy in. This is the idea behind constant current, constant voltage charging, or CC, CV charging. Constant current is the stage when we're putting as much energy in as we can for the pack. But as we start to get close to full, we switch over to the CV or constant voltage section. That's when we are trickling it in and the battery slowly finishes charging safely. This is why it's important to use a charger designed for your battery to make sure those points where it changes over from CC to CV are right for that pack. Hopefully this has helped answer some of your questions. Although, if you have more, we're happy to help. Visit vanguardpower.com and click on the Contact Us button. We'd be happy to help walk through any other questions you have about your application or batteries. Thank you.